Yeah, what's up, Trojans? It's been a very long, emotional, and spiritual day. Wow. The Lord does work in mysterious ways. Um, And I need to relieve a little tension. I was more in a mood to rant the last three days than I am now. But I'm still going to do it. Okay, long story short. TNA is having Slammiversary in a couple weeks. It's probably going to be two hours. But uh, the matches so far, they have Magnus versus James Storm. They've got the Ultimate X match for the new champion between uh, Grado, Loki, and uh, Tigre Uno. They've got the final tag team match for the tag team titles with the Wolves and the Dirty Heels. I think Brooke may be getting a title shot against Terran too. So somehow, some way, even though they're still taping post anniversary episodes, uh, uh, before anniversary, the storylines and the tag, the tag, the title matches. Are um are still going to be on the pay per view, right? But for some reason, for some dumb reason, I know what the reason is. The world championship, the number one championship, is not going to be on defended as anniversary. Instead, they're doing it for free, or as Courtney would say, for free. Um, that's retarded. Um, I would rather have any one of the matches on anniversary right now be for free. Besides the world title. Um, now, here's the thing. I understand that Destination America are unprofessional pieces of garbage. And they they didn't even tell TNA and Dixie Carter that they were consulting with Ring of Honor behind their back. <laughs> Not only that, but they grabbed them on the shitty Friday night time slot that they put them in. And smacked them in Wednesday nights for the sole purpose of... Uh, fucking bringing up Ring of Honor. Uh, why TNA is taking the SCD infected dick up their ass from these assholes is beyond me. But, you know, it's Destination America's fault and their fault alone. Right there at Destination America. But what TNA could have done is they could have turned this negative into a positive. They could have improvised. Um, EC3 is a man that has been pushed to the moon for about two years now. I mean, I don't even think in TNA or any company that's ever been done. You had this man undefeated. I mean, at least WWE, the longest they could do this is probably a year. You had this guy undefeated. Like, he beat everybody. World champion after world champion, Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. <laughs> even when the storyline calls for him to lose, he still didn't lose. Like, you build him up. For some reason, you guys saw something in Ethan Carter the third. And you pushed him. You took this ham and egg or jobber comedian from FCW, NXT, who was partying all the time in South Florida with the, with the talent that John Laurinaitis brought in. And you brought him into TNA after he got released from WWE. And you made him into EC3. He looks like a main eventer. He looks like a champion. And he's probably the biggest heel in wrestling right now. And has been for about his whole run in TNA. This is the payoff. This is what you've been building to. His eventual title match. That you waited longer than you needed to to give him. And you're probably going to... You were probably going to... Because I know this match was supposed to be for a anniversary. You were probably going to have him win against Kurt Angle. And then go to Bound for Glory and face Spud or something. But you're doing it for free. And not only is it for free... It's on a taped episode. Why? Okay. Like I said, I understand you guys were backed into a corner and you were forced to move your plans. Uh, but this is important. Like, this is a big deal. You need to fight this. Like, you need to be against this. Um, from what I heard, you had an episode taped, like you were supposed to tape something on July 1st. Um. Just reschedule that taping then. Like, that's all you really need to change. You didn't need to, like, take a whole bunch of taping dates and move them to before the pay-per-view. I mean, like, like, give me a break. Like, I would, if I was Billy Corgan or whoever, I would fight against this until I couldn't win anymore. If anything, 
if all else fails, like just have the EC3 versus Kurt Angle for the world title on a live impact. If you really have to do it, I mean, you this belongs on some anniversary, no questions asked. But if you really have to do it on an impact, can you at least do it on a live one? And why are you taping your shows before the after the pay per view post shows? Post pay per view shows before the show pay per view anyway. Why are you doing it? Um, you can't just tape it the Monday and Tuesday after Slam anniversary. You can't just do that. Uh, that live episode that that live episode you're gonna do before Slam anniversary. You can't just have EC3 win the title, and then maybe have Angle get his rematch at Slam anniversary. You can't do that. And how are all the storylines with with post Slam anniversary shows being taped before Slam anniversary? How are all the storylines, the the Magnus and Storm, the titles, the tag titles, like even with your post pay per view shows taped before that? How are how is it possible to have all these storylines and and championship matches on the pay per view, but not the not the main belt, not the number one championship? This is inconceivable. This is uh retarded. It's gay. Destination America backed him into a corner. Because they're unprofessional pieces of shit. But TNA could have fucking done something about it. Like, they could have fought against us. I mean, like I said, if you really have to move them to Wednesday nights, you could you should have just had the world title match on the fucking live show. And then maybe the rematch at the pay-per-view. That would have been better than what we're getting. And then post shows. Post shows should... Bound for Glory, the role to Bound for Glory was completely unenjoyable. Last year because of this dark shit. Post pay-per-view show should never be taped before the pay-per-view. I don't care what you say. You could tape pay-per-views, but don't do that shit. Um, and if you're gonna, if you really have to tape shows before Slam anniversary, do two meaningless one night only shows. You know what I mean? Do like a X tournament or a tag team tournament, and have those taped, and then it, have them taped before Slam anniversary and air it after Slam anniversary. Do something. Improvise. Use your brain. Okay? Um, I was going to say using your brain kept you guys alive for 13 years. But uh, I don't want to say that because decisions like this held you guys back for 13 years. You know, Like, use your brain. I understand it was an act of desperation, but Destination America, and like I said, I'm, they're, they're, they're at fault here. It's their fault and their fault alone. The only reason I'm mad at TNA is because they didn't fight against this. They didn't try. And what they're doing, their alternative is really retarded and makes absolutely no sense. And because of that, the buildup, the payoff that you were waiting on EC3 for so long is what we're getting. What a joke. I was so excited for this pay-per-view. And I'm not giving up on TNA. I do believe that Destination America is, is taking them out. That's what I believe. I thought Meltzer was full of shit, but the evidence from other sources and I put two and two together and it's it's I believe it. I believe they, they can change their mind. I don't know if they will. But I do believe that so far that's the game plan. But yeah, I wasn't too loud in this video, but I don't know what the hell you're doing, TNA. You don't need to tape shows before Slime Anniversary. You could do it. You got an entire week after Slime Anniversary to do this. And if you really have to have this on an impact, you need to do it in a live impact. You need to. I hope the God Day changes, and you need to uh, the post the post anniversary shows that you're taping before. Just do like random one night only shows, where the winner goes to a battle royal. The winners of the matches go in a battle royal at the end or something. And that's the thing. You, you, there's no room for the world title match at this pay per view. Like, is the pay per view going to be two hours or something? I already know it's an eye pay per view. Ah, <sighs> whatever. Good luck to you, Nate. This isn't enough to get me to stop watching, but it's it's enough to disgust me and make me sick. When I watch a show, I'm going to be like this. I was supposed to be excited for EC3, man. He's my favorite villain in wrestling right now. Way better than Seth Rollins. And this is what we're getting. I just hope Angle retains and ends his streak and then EC3 could win it in another match or something because I don't want it to be like this. But yeah. Global Force just started up. And they're about to hit TV next month, so I don't know. I'm still pulling for you guys, CNA. But right now it's gonna be tough.
when EJ and Gene Carlos and Darren and myself are on TUWC venting about this, you know there's a problem. But I wish his company nothing but the best. Um, I'm excited for Billy Corgan, but the news that broke after he's he joined has been nothing but disappointing. And it's not his fault, you know, it's just like the channel and the network and all that shit. You know, but I wish him nothing but the best. Um, we need a fresh face, and I think EC3 is that guy. It just sucks that it has to happen like this. It's that stupid network. Fucking in favor of a Ring of Honor, a show that's already been aired. Whatever. Fly high, TNA. Fuck Destination America. And uh, enjoy Slammiversary. And enjoy the July 1st episode of Impact. EC3. Trouble, trouble, trouble. And this is trouble if this doesn't change soon. All right, later, y'all. God bless.